attack the Quintana, Egita, Carapaz, Almeida. We had a brawl on the Queen stage of Ultra Catalunya. Stage four from La Seu up to Boito. 15 kilometer mountaintop finish at about 6%. Naira Quintana needing to gain some time on GC. Ben O'Connor wearing the leader's jersey. So as I said before, I said, let's go down. Here's me driving down. Let's pay him and the race a visit. Honor them with my presence. Saw a few riders, even snag an interview. Two minutes before the stage, how are you feeling? In the green and gold, three in a row for Australia. Then. I know Australian colours today. No, I feel all right. It's uh, Yesterday was pretty surprising. I didn't really expect it. So I'm just keen to try and see if I can hold the jersey. I know it's close, <laughs> isn't it? 20 minutes yeah, we away, just half down. an hour away. I know, <laughs> same for yesterday's finish, but I don't know today. But uh, okay. no, I'm just happy. I mean, there's nothing else I can say. It's the first time I've led a big race, actually, since... 2016 and that was a small race in uh in asia so yeah it's a new step all right good luck should be good just nairo and uae attacking i'm sure you'll be fine the most relaxed stage start i could have imagined nairo was chilling and like no one was even bothering him breakaway went and it had riders really close on gc so ag2 i had to keep it on a short leash for most of this stage, it had Soler on 30 seconds and Carthy on a minute. Eventually, Donovan and Army Rail attacked those guys, perhaps hoping they would get more of a leash because they were further back on GC, and they did. AG2R letting up a bit. Army Rail on the final climb, going clear of Donovan. He's looking good, Army Rail. You saw him in Provence, good rider on FDJ. And it was Arkea taking it up early, or maybe it was Bait. For Naira Quintana, when Anacona's pacing here, you see Quintana pull out of third wheel, wanting to move back, and O'Connor slides up into third wheel, which, I don't know, he could have, I guess, chosen to let the domestiques of RK go, they're no threat, and he's following now Eli Jezbe. If you want to check out the article on lanternrouge.com.au, we look at the watts, Jezbe paces so hard here, he did like 6.5 watts per kilo for three minutes, he gaps, I think, the edge to our domestique off his wheel, and O'Connor goes clear with him. And, and I think this was bait from Quintana. He was trying to get the other GC guys to surge. They did. Ayuso's pacing. O'Connor's done a bit of a surge. Igita snap closes. This is with 12 Ks to go on this climb, like 25, 30 minutes left on the climb. Eventually, Carapaz and Bennett bridge across. And at this point, Jesbe eases up. I mean, for O'Connor, it was looking good. Like, attacks the best form of defense. Everyone's having to close to him, and he was able to do it in the wheels. But Quintana had to call Jezbe back with now Carapaz pacing on the front. So even if it was bait and it kind of worked, he had to get paced back to that group ASAP. But Quintana rode this climb really smooth as Valverde was dropped, whilst others were surging all over the place. Okay, caught. Carapaz eases up, and we know there's another attack coming. It's from George Bennett on UAE Emirates. So instead of pacing on the front, they attack with Bennett. He's actually on 19 seconds on GC. I think it was a good move because it forced Ineos' hand. Yes, Army Rail's up ahead. So it is a different race scenario to yesterday. It's not O'Connor going clear with less to go on the climb. Bennett gets to Army Rail quickly, and Jonathan Castroviejo keeps this at 18, then 14, then 13 seconds. He paces for like... 15 minutes on this climb with C. Rodriguez eventually closing Bennett down, and this is where the action kicked off. Sosa was dropped under the pacing of Rodriguez. UAE have two riders close on GC with Ayuso and Almeida, and it's Almeida that goes first with O'Connor on his wheel. And this is the difficulty. When you are in the leader's jersey, you're looked to to close attacks down. He had to close the UAE man down, and when El Hagua de Tulcan goes the first time, O'Connor calls UAE's bluff. He looks at Ayuso, and then he looks at Almeida. They're the only team with, apart from Ineos, two riders in the group, but I don't think Rodriguez could pace at this point. And it's Almeida with 2.9 Ks to go in this climb, pacing back Carapaz, who has Aguita who bridged across to him. Remember, Aguita bridged across to the Jezbear O'Connor move at the start. He's very reactive, Aguita. But at this point, now that he's here... Pacing, that's a dangerous threat to UAE. Almeida closes it down, an 800-meter pull in the wind, pulls so strongly that he drops Juan Ayuso in the group, and it's O'Connor on Almeida's wheel. So you look at what poles. This is the difference. When you're in the leader's jersey, you have to do more work, more surges, whereas poles, flying under the radar, rode a smoother climb than O'Connor was able to do. And O'Connor 
when he's not in the leader's jersey, has been able to fly under the radar and then attack when he wants to at the last moment. And he gets dropped with 1,900 meters to go. Still Almeida pacing, despite Ayuso being off the back. It's curious. I'm not sure if he was pacing to drop O'Connor specifically or he was just pacing because Almeida likes pacing. He did the same thing in Torini and Paranis. does the same thing in Catalonia last year for Ineos. But he's got riders ahead of Ayuso and himself on GC. He's got a better sprint than all of them in a finish, and he was pacing. Maybe he was just trying to get rid of O'Connor, and I think he cost himself the GC jersey, at least on this stage, a dangerous counter the first time Naira really went with Agita bridging across to him. It's a shame Nara didn't go on with it. Maybe he could have put Almeida under a little bit of pressure, but Agita doesn't pull through. Quintana's looking behind, and Almeida's going to counter them, which is the curious move, because I think Almeida, with O'Connor quite a way behind at this point, could have beaten these guys on the road in the sprint by a second or two with bonus seconds in play and Ayuso behind, he could have played the card of sitting on. Igita and Quintana, who need to pace to gain more time. Ayuso pacing back that group in the snow. We're in ski territory above 1,800 meters. Almeida starts to lead out the sprint and he almost stuffs it. Like, he did his best to stuff this stage when he was the most superior rider legs-wise. If Quintana was able to close him to the barriers and shut off this line here, Quintana, I think, wins this stage. But he just doesn't close Almeida, and Almeida goes the shortest way through that right-hand corner, surges past Quintana, and takes the stage. His first win. Since joining UAE Team Emirates, he was by far the strongest in the climb, pacing for kilometers and kilometers, chasing attacks back, leading up the sprint, and still winning anyway. Same time as Quintana and Agita with wild poles, just like he did on Provence last year, sneak into fourth. He's going to go top five on GC, I think. Johannes in a good performance, fifth, Rodriguez and Martin. Now, GC... Because Almeida didn't take any time on the road, because that hasn't been a TT, Quintana goes into the leader's jersey because he has the least cumulative placings in the previous stages because he came like 17th and 25th in the sprint stages and Almeida was like 70th or something. Almeida is going to have to take bonus seconds somewhere, be it at a finish, be it at intermediate sprints. If he wants to win GC of Volta at Catalonia, if he gets there, he should take them. If the break doesn't take those seconds, he's quicker than Quintana on the flat in a sprint. Today I was a bit unlucky. I had a crash in the beginning. For moments I was a bit off, but yeah, I'm super happy with the win and I felt so good today. I was feeling pretty good in the last climb. I was always controlling my effort. Then George was ahead, so it was perfect for us. We just had to ride on the wheel. And then I just, yeah, I just did my pace. And uh, yeah, in the end, I just sprinted for the victory. It was, was really good. But with no serious GC days left to come, we have Volta Catalunya poised on a knife edge. Can't wait to watch the stage tomorrow and the rest of the stages on the weekend. Hope you enjoyed the video and my little story time, and I'll see you with the recap tomorrow. Ciao.